Cyclone Freddy piling inland over Mozambique on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 12th. The main story of the day, of course, is Cyclone Freddy making landfall in Mozambique near Kelimane and moving slightly inland at this time, remaining a Category 2 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, making landfall at the top end of that category earlier on this evening local time. In the Atlantic though, it's 81 days until hurricane season and nothing is active right now, although there is a building nor'easter style system off the coast of the United States, which could be in town for quite a bit, delivering significant winter weather. Out of the East Atlantic, also quite a few clouds over there too. Area of interest that we've got near Vanuatu right now, we're giving a 30% chance likely to develop later on down the line as it moves gradually southwestwards towards New Caledonia. It's quiet in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean and of course in the western part we've obviously got Cyclone Freddy which as we've publicized uh, has made landfall as a strong category 2 storm and causing potentially catastrophic conditions along the coast and well inland from substantial amounts of rainfall. The remnants of Kevin are still alive, right down there, a weak system by now. We've got a 40% chance um, to the east of Fiji, uh, a system that could develop as it heads towards Niue, and an extremely rare system there off the coast of Peru, which we're now giving a 10% chance as it gradually moves southwestwards. Satellite imagery over the last 24 hours, look out for any of those red zones, and you might see one or two little specks there as Freddie made landfall in Mozambique. But in general, the world is looking fairly quiet in terms of excessive rainfall. Quite a few spots over Central Africa, though. Satellite imagery shows Freddy making landfall earlier on this evening, and you can see it did continue to move northwestwards at approximately two miles per hour. Uh, so that is an interesting development that is still moving inland and that increases the chances that it might not get back out again or at least it would be a much weaker system. GFS sticking to its guns though that it will be a substantial tropical cyclone when it does emerge off the coast in a day or two. We'll check that out in a moment. But you can see a storm with a well-developed eye and cloud tops. Some people arguing it might have been a stronger landfall than what we uh, went with. You know, it actually reminds me a little bit of Gombe's landfall, was it really ramping up when it made landfall there, uh, but this storm doing much the same. It just didn't have enough time to strengthen much further. And here is the other system, the one in the far eastern part of the Pacific Ocean in the southern hemisphere near Peru. A vast anomaly if this gets anywhere near forming, but no signs of circulation yet, uh, but little bits of convection blowing up at this time. Sea surface temperatures on our new uh, dashboard kind of thing here. We have sea surface temperature charts on the Force 13 website now. Take a look at force13.com. Eastern Pacific looking good there. Uh, yellow and above, that's 26 degrees Celsius, the generally, generally accepted threshold for tropical cyclone development. Atlantic still has some work to do, but the Caribbean is looking good. The Indian Ocean looking very good. Uh, in the eastern part of the Arabian Sea and warmer on the eastern side of the Bay of Bengal as well than on the western side and down in the southwestern Pacific that looks rather neat interestingly uh, but the Mozambique Channel still got lots of heat down there uh, but a few cool spots after Freddy's first passage last week temperature still hovering around 28 degrees where it is right now Really warm off the coast of Australia, we've been pointing out that out for quite a while off the west coast, over 30 degrees Celsius. Out towards the eastern part there over the Coral Sea, very warm up there as well in the tropical zone and in the Gulf of Carpentaria, at least 29, 30 degrees. Out over the South Pacific, very warm waters to the north of Fiji, around the northern part of Vanuatu and continuing right off towards the east there, temperatures well above 28 degrees. And in the western Pacific, at the very low latitudes, it's really warm, 30 degrees plus near Guam and beyond 28 degrees already worming their way northwards there and that is above average on the sea surface temperature anomalies as you can see there 
but massive discrepant cold pools in the South China Sea and in the Mozambique Channel, curiously, uh, although Freddy didn't seem to mind that. The cold pool seems to be fading, though, around the northern coast of Australia, and I can certainly vouch for that with the temperatures that we're currently seeing. Oceanic heat potential then looks like this and the South Pacific right near its peak at the moment um, This time of year starting to cool down eventually But it's right near its peak amount and really starting to fire up off near Guam and into the Philippine Sea there in the northern hemisphere No activity yet of course, but signs that the Pacific is going to be back in business this year by the looks of the oceanic heat content at least GFS over the next five days shows Freddy's partial demise. It does weaken much more than previous GFS models uh, suggested, but it does move back out there still as a tropical storm and on towards southern uh, Madagascar once again, moving southeastwards. But yes, that is a significant change. It is only a weak to moderate tropical storm by the time it comes back out, whereas previously last night's update, it was suggesting it would still be near category one strength. So some slight good news there. South Pacific, potential formation of a tropical cyclone there, east of Fiji, that's the 40% system. And there's the other one near Vanuatu, that 30% uh, system. Both of them develop on the GFS run, and both of them pretty much get to Category 1 status there, hurricane equivalent. So they do have a decent ride. Uh, the first one on the right hand side passed quite close to Niue and then it's over pretty much open waters there to the southeast of Samoa and then does a little bit of a zigzag actually and eventually will probably move on towards the Cook Islands. And here's this big anomaly here near Peru. We've circled its current position and in its general direction it will move towards the southwest pretty cleanly um, and the interesting thing about this is that GFS only develops it a little bit later down the line it doesn't develop fully of course but near the end of that five day period there's just little signs of rotation and the winds getting up a little bit more that's why we're giving it a 10% uh, which would be extremely unusual to have a system over here but it doesn't look likely yet Rainfall expectations then for the affected areas of Mozambique and the wider region of South and Eastern Africa. Uh, very large amounts of rain still to be expected over the coast of Mozambique, still looking out towards a further 26 inches of rainfall possibly, that's around 650 millimetres. Uh, more rainfall than what we've already seen, I don't know how much we've already had in this area so far, but I'd imagine it's close to 20 inches already. Also around Lake Malawi and to the west there towards Zambia, areas of localized high amounts of rain there too, up to around 8 inches, 200 millimeters. And Madagascar, they'll get a little bit more in some areas, looking towards 2 to 3 inches there. And southern Mozambique getting up towards nearly 2 inches, that's uh, 50 millimeters. As we zoom out there, you can see the rest of the whole continent getting a lot of rainfall at the moment. Longer range, day 5 to 10, you can see what's left of Freddy down there. Another system almost becomes tropical before uh, running down towards the south there. And then look north because another system uh, looks like it might form near the end of this 10 day period. It is quite long range, but there it is becoming a mature, uh, quite severe tropical cyclone moving southwesterly at first. But it does start to recurve and shouldn't be a threat to any of the Masserine Islands if that does come to fruition. South Pacific watching those two cyclones that first developed so the one on the right zigzagging again the other one heading now towards New Caledonia making a Category 1 landfall there and they're both moving apart there interestingly enough and then you have the western system starting to make a little jaunt towards Australia stalling out quite a bit there before tropical storm force winds get close in the 10 day period look towards the system on the east and it continues heading in that direction towards French Polynesia will probably avoid any of those islands as it saunters down a little bit too far south. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items, hoodies, shirts and towels and all kinds of other things, pillows there as well. Are still waiting for Hone t-shirts there too, which we're still waiting for, and full season and individual storm animations on request. In the silly range, what happens to that cyclone then? It does become quite impressive, category 3 or 4, an interesting one to watch if that continues to be the case, as it shouldn't affect any land areas, so that will be a nice storm to look at 
if it does indeed happen the way it's supposed to. And maybe another little system, uh, a weak one, barreling around to its north towards the end of that run, and possibly a weak uh, vortex off the west coast of Australia as well. But this really is clutching at straws. It's very long range, and a lot of things could change before then. That's near the end of the month indeed. And looking now towards the South Pacific once again, well, that western system does eventually uh, harass the coast of Australia right down near Brisbane and continues towards the south there. The tropical storm force winds just about reaching the coast. It's still, there it is, strengthening again. Hurricane equivalent status as it moves southwards. Uh, but that is long range, very speculative. Uh, there's no guarantee at all that anything like that would happen yet. But if it did, that would be a interesting storm will certainly attract a lot of attention you can talk about that and anything that we've covered on tonight's tropical weather bulletin on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 our big community of over 3,000 weather watchers you can talk about anything there and hopefully you'll enjoy it that sounded really weird didn't it Right then, let's take a look at what happened on this day in the world of storms. It was March 12th, 2014. Probably did an update or two on this storm. Cyclone Lucy, which peaked as a Category 1 towards the end of this day, as it was coasting southwards just east of Vanuatu. Uh, Hadi, another cyclone to its west, had just dissipated, and eventually there was a little system in the Gulf of Carpentaria that would uh, die off and then s start up again in the Indian Ocean. That would become Cyclone Gillian, which I'm sure some of you may also remember. Nine years ago now, since 2014, would you believe? And there it goes. Back to this year, and in the Atlantic. Uh, we have Arlene, the first name on the list. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone. No matter what code we are, that still seems to be the case. We are code orange, by the way. In the Western Pacific, next stop is Sanvu. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Mocha. We are still stuck at 11 storms that have formed so far this year. Uh, Freddy's probably accounted for about five separate storms but it's all wrapped up in one. In the Australian region, next up is Herman, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again on Monday night.